two, the Spirit was now poured on us through, through God. God would pour the Spirit on us, and it would stay on us. In the Old Testament, it would just leave. Now, there was a promise, the promise of a Savior. Simeon took up in his arms and praised God, saying, Sovereign Lord, as you have promised, you now dismiss, dismiss your servant in peace. Now, Simeon, he walked in the temple courts as Mary and Joseph were doing the customs of the law. He walked in during that time, led by the Holy Spirit. So now, now that we have the promise of a Savior, the next thing that we get is salvation is available to everybody. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared in the sight of all people, a light of revelation to the Gentiles and for the glory of your people of Israel. We have two key points of the story. What's the main, what's the heart of the story? Number one, the promise of a Savior. Number two, the salvation is available to everybody. Luke 2. The third one is Jesus was born to die so that we can live. To think about that, that Jesus was born to die so that we can live, Jesus was born already knowing that he was going to die for us. You know, Luke chapter 2. The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. Then Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, This is a child destined to cause the falling and rising of many in Israel, and to be a sign that would be spoken against, so that the thoughts of many's hearts would be revealed, and the sword, and a sword will pierce your own soul too. Now here, many will rise and many will fall. What's going on is um, many will rise, many will fall because many will accept God, will accept Jesus as the Messiah, but then many will not. They were totally lost. They will not accept him. They will deny him as the Christ. While saying all this, Simeon was speaking to Mary. You know, as a mother, to hear this, that your son's going to be that in a, was born to die, you know. Simeon comes in and tells Mary that your son's the Messiah. He's going to have, many are going to rise because of him, many are going to fall. But then your heart's going to be pierced. Because at that time, Simeon's speaking about the crucifixion, how she's going to be there. She's going to be there to witness it. Her, heart, her heart's going to be pierced by a sword. And then we finish with John 10. Jesus said, I came so that you can have real and eternal life, more better than life, more better life than ever dreamed of. Thank you, Daniel. Embracing the heart of the story. What is God trying to show us? So it's not about it's not about buying more. It's not about spending more. It's more about enjoying the little things. It's about embracing the heart of the story. I like how Daniel said it. It's the promise of a Savior. Salvation is available to everyone. Jesus was born so that you and I can live. He was born to die. Well, it's interesting that another person comes along. Not only did Simeon come along when, when uh, Mary and Joseph were dedicating this child, but a woman comes along, and her name is Anna. I want you to notice this. Part three of this message is this. Christmas is not about spending more. It's more about experiencing the love of a Savior. It's about experiencing the love of a Savior. I'm going to give you three ways that we do that. Number one is by devoting my time to God. Devoting my time to God. The time that God has given you on earth. It's fleeting. It's going away quickly. It's passing by us. We're about to go into another year. But yet, when we want to have a relationship with God, when we want to experiencing, experience God's love, we have to make time for that. We make time for going to church. We make time for reading His Bible. We make time for being in a study and, and just focusing on God. You cannot uh, have a love of a relationship. You cannot have a loving relationship by ignoring anybody. Well, notice this. 
There was also a prophetess, the Bible tells us, Anna, the daughter of Hanul of the tribe of Asher, and she was very old. And she had lived her, with her husband seven years after her marriage, and then was a widow until she was 84. She never left the temple. Now it's amazing that here they are dedicating this baby, and Simeon comes along and says, this is the baby I've been waiting for my whole life. God, you told me that I would not die until I see the salvation, the Messiah. And here he is. He goes on to tell Mary, Mary, your soul is going to be pierced. Your heart's going to be pierced because you're going to witness your son on the cross being killed. But he would bring salvation to all of Israel and to the whole world. And now we find this woman, Anna, coming along and she's devoting her time to God and she's experiencing that love of a Savior. Now, I want you to notice this. What does she bring? Well, she devotes her abilities to God. Now, you might want to write that down. If you and I are going to experience the love of a Savior, we have to devote our abilities to God. Not only our time, but the very, the very thing is that God has given us. Now, I want you to notice what she had to give. In Luke chapter 2, verse 37, the Bible tells us that she never left the temple, serving night and day with fastings and what, guys? Prayers. Prayers. This woman who loved God, who was there all the time, helping out, serving as she, much as she could. She comes along at just the appropriate time. Can you imagine how God would allow this woman to come, on, come alongside and, and just witness the Messiah? Well, the Bible says that she had a love for God and she devoted her time for God and God loved her and she devoted her abilities to God. She served him day and night. And the Bible says with fastings and prayer. Now, I don't know how long she prayed, but if you have the gift of prayer, that is one thing that you can serve God with. If you want to experience in God's love, what is it that you're good at? What are the talents or abilities that you have? Well, you dedicate that to God. You say, God, I love you. Thank you so much for loving me. I want to devote my time and my abilities to you. Notice this next point. Another way we, we experience God's love is by devoting our resources to God. I devote my resources to God. In Luke chapter 2, verse 38, the Bible says that coming up to them at that very moment, she gave thanks to God. And she spoke about the child to all who were looking forward to the redemption of Jerusalem. Now imagine this. Picture this in your head. We have Mary and Joseph and we have baby Jesus. He's 40 days old. They bring him to the temple and they're dedicating him. And this man comes up and he says, look, there he is, the Messiah. And Simeon is holding this baby and he's, he's telling him that he's going to cause the rise and fall of many nations. People are going to either accept him or they're going to reject him. He's going to go to a cross. And then this woman comes along named Anna and she's like, Lord, look at the baby. This is the promised Messiah. Lord, I've been serving you my whole life. Lord, Lord, I give you what I have to offer through fastings and prayer, God. But you allow me to witness this birth. Not the birth, but the child. She gave thanks to him, to God. She went out and she spoke to everyone. Look at the Messiah is here. She devoted her ability. She devoted her resources to God. Now, I want you to notice how this how this continues the story. In Luke chapter 2, verse 39 through 40, we see this. When Joseph and Mary had done everything required by the law of the Lord, after they had uh, sacrificed, after they had devoted this child to the Lord, dedicated him, they returned to Galilee to their own town of Nazareth. And the child grew and became strong, and he was filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now, what does this mean for you and I? Well, guys, when we think about Christmas and all the negativity comes to mind, or when we think about Christmas and we think about where we have to be and what we have to buy, I just want to challenge you to rethink it and think about what God did for us 2,000 years ago by sending His Son, Jesus Christ. 
You know, it's not about spending more. It's about enjoying the things we have right now. Are there, is there anything that you could say, thank you, God, for this part of my life today?